Hello everybody, it is Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be taking a look at Windows 98 SE also known as Second Edition. This was released on April 23rd, 1999 after the original release of Windows 98 which was June 25th, 1998. And I'll be doing a few more videos like these where I take a look at some older operating systems to just see what they were like back in the day. So the first one is again Windows 98 SE. This is in a virtual machine. This is running in VMware Workstation for Windows and the boot process for Windows 98 SE in my VM, which is running off of an SSD, isn't the fastest thing in the world. So we are still waiting for it to boot up. Shouldn't take too much longer. I might actually, oh, there we go. So we are at a blue screen with our cursor, and here we are. Enter your network password. I am not using Microsoft networking, so I will skip that. And here we are at our desktop. So it's pretty plain compared to what we have now. It's not as flashy or fancy compared to what we have today. So let's go ahead and right click on our desktop and just take a look around. So active desktop, we'll just skip that for now. Let's go into the properties and take a look at the wallpapers that we have. Let's tile this one, black thatch, all these wallpapers that everybody who used these operating systems back in the day remember. I used to use the clouds one, just have to stretch it out. Not the best looking thing in the world, especially this one, that's terrible. We'll have to tile some of these as well. If my clicking is too loud on my mouse, then I do apologize. It's certainly quite loud. Let's go to setup. Yep, that's what that looks like. Stitches, straw mat, tiles, triangles. I kind of like the way this looks, although after staring at it for three seconds or so, I don't really like it anymore. And then the Windows 98 one, which is based off of an active desktop, which is, allows it to scale throughout your desktop and is interactive. You can click on this and it opens up the, well, it would have opened up the Windows Update page, it looks like, but I will take another look at Internet Explorer in a little while. Let's take a look at some of the screensavers that we have. Let's go and preview this. Pretty standard screensavers. 3D flying objects, man, I haven't seen these in quite a long time. I think I'll save the maze for last because that's the one everybody liked. The pipe one was pretty nice as well. Let's check this one out. So that's what the pipes screensaver looks like. 3D text. Let's go ahead and change this to something fun. And typing, oh, there we go. My mouse was out of the window, so it became, or the keyboard rather, became inactive. Something a little bit more modern in an older screensaver, I guess. Baseball, this isn't, well, I was going to say interactive. It's more of an animation type of thing, so uh, not sure how that one works. Channel screensaver, does this just show, yeah, this might just show a website. Curves and colors. Remember staring at that for quite a while before turning that off. Dangerous creatures. We have some bubbles and some sea life moving around. Flying through space. I think a lot of people liked that one as well. Flying windows. I have messed with this VM a little bit, but it has certainly been a while. These screensavers I haven't really seen since I used I think Windows ME may have had similar screensavers. I think we should be able to go into the themes. Yep, desktop themes, we'll take a look at that in a little while. So most of these screensavers have or are available with those desktop themes. Where do you want to go today? Question mark. Sounds like I'm asking Siri something. The 60s USA. Not entirely sure how that works or what it has to do with the 60s. Underwater was another popular one. Not going to wait for it to turn on. 
Ah, this one was kind of cool. It basically just took your background wallpaper and puts everything into squares here. Takes a few minutes for it to go. And now let's go to 3D Maze. I'm not going to let it go the entire way, but this one was quite popular because you can customize the texture that you have for the maze. Let's just go to the default um, setup here and let it run for a little while. It doesn't stretch itself to the full resolution of the display, which is currently set to 1280 by 720. I would have done full 1920 by 1080, but I'd rather have you guys be able to see a lot of the smaller things if you're watching on a smaller device. So let's go ahead and change this to one of these crazy color changing textures. So three different ones here. Let's turn the maze overlay on just because. That is crazy. Anyway, those are the screen savers. We can change the color scheme a little bit. Again, these are based off of the desktop themes that we have available. You can change the icons, make the icons larger. Pretty fancy stuff back in the day. And I think that's everything here. So what to do next? Let's go to the control panel, add new hardware, add remove programs. Don't really have anything fancy here. You see all of the default things that I have installed from the original installation. Date and time options. Desktop themes, let's minimize that and check out what we have. So we have the baseball one. And let's go, oh, there it goes. So it changes the cursor, it changes your sounds. Let's see if there are any custom sounds. I do have my own audio muted, so I'm not sure how loud these are. Changes your fonts background let's go to dangerous creatures does take a moment or two for the background to change inside your computer was pretty cool I remember using this one quite a bit I liked the way some of the icons looked for my computer and recycle bin let's take a look at jungle looks like some of the taskbar icons just got really bad looking Leonardo da Vinci. That's what that one looks like. More windows. I liked this one quite a bit as well because of the icons. The background wallpaper didn't look too bad back in the day. Of course, nowadays they're all quite low resolution. And as you saw earlier, you are able to mix and match these types of things. So you could have a color scheme from one theme, a wallpaper from another, cursor from another, sounds from another, and so on. Let's take a look at science. I liked this one quite a bit as well. I think when I was using 95 and ME and so on, I alternated between the themes every so often. Space is pretty cool. Let's check out sports. And that, so let's check out the 60s USA and the golden era. Let's go to travel, underwater, Windows 98, and Windows default. Let's go ahead and pick Windows 98 for the rest of this video and go back to the control panel. We've already gone through display. Let's go to fonts. Good stuff there. I don't have any controllers hooked up or plugged in. I guess that's a bit redundant. Internet Explorer options. Basically the same stuff that we have today for the most part. Keyboard options, modem options. I'm not using a modem. It's set up to work through my local area network. Multimedia options, nothing really to choose here. Networking options, ODBC data sources, whatever that is. Password options, power management. Printers, don't have any printers set up. Regional settings, sounds. System here we have some of our specs, so it is using a genuine Intel processor, obviously. And I do have one gig of RAM set up for the virtual machine. Telephony 
and users and VMware tools, nothing to really see there. Now let's make our way to the, let's go take a look at Internet Explorer first. You may find yourself unsurprised at how some web pages render in this very old version of Internet Explorer. If we take a look at this, this is version 5 of Internet Explorer. Let's take a look at some sites that we can visit today. So Google, for the most part, looks fine. Let's see if we get any rendering problems if we actually search for a, sh for a site. It's not the best layout. If anything, it looks like a mobile layout. Okay, let's go to Bing to see what that looks like. Doesn't fare quite as well. There's no background image of the day. Since we're here, let's take a look at what GadgetUnit.com looks like. Assuming it loads, some websites don't completely load. This could have been worse, I think. It does seem like it's trying to load a responsive layout. Let's try and go into one of these and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's probably not going to work all the way. Let's go back to the home page if it even works. Yeah, let's just skip that. I think I can get a version of Firefox to work on here since it's quite an old web browser in itself. Let's go to another website, see what it looks like. I'll open a couple more after this. I think these websites are just so large nowadays that IE doesn't even really try to do anything. Let's go into the here. It's not too bad. It's doable, I guess. Let's go to CNET.com. This website is pretty large and bloated, I would say. And it kind of works. So I think that's it with Internet Explorer. Now let's go to the Start menu. We have Windows Update, which I don't think works because it tries to redirect to an old uh, website that doesn't exist anymore and we're just stuck in a redirect loop. Programs, accessories, communications, dial-up networking, phone dialer, CD player. So if you wanted to use your computer as a CD player, you are certainly able to do that. Let's go to interactive CD sampler. I don't remember what this was. Enter the Windows 98 CD, which I do not have anymore. Entertainment again, Windows Media Player. This is what Windows Media Player looked like quite a long time ago. Doubt any of those links go to where they originally were supposed to go. Actually, maybe we do have some stuff here. Or we did a second ago before everything disappeared. Let's go to, if I can actually click on one of these. It keeps pushing everything down the page. Can't click them fast enough, so let's just move on. The music guide, it went to the same spot, so anyway. Next up we have games, so we have free cell. Must just be Spider Solitaire. No, I don't know how to play this. So let's just quit out of that. Hearts. I never really played this, so I don't know what to do, and it looks like it's not working. And the OS may have just froze, so let me... Oh, there we go. So that is a networking game. Minesweeper, everybody knows about this. I was never any good at this game. I never really looked into how to properly play it. I just click around and see what happens. And that happens. We have one more game to take a look at, which is Solitaire. And I don't remember how to play. Lovely looking palm tree that we have there. Yeah, I really do not know how to play. <laughs> it's been a long time. So let's just skip that. Next, let's go to... Let's look at the disk defragmenter. Looks much different than we have nowadays. Let's go to OK and show the details. And while it's loading or doing its thing, let's go to other system tools. We have disk cleanup, character map, nothing too intensive. Scan disk, I'll go to that in a minute as well. The resource meter. Okay. 
and it's right here not the most detailed of things but if you know back in the day it was probably pretty fancy things let's go to welcome to windows and take a look at the little introduction program here connect to the internet already connected to the internet and a lot of these things apparently you have to have the CD inserted for which probably isn't the best of experiences to have to have that disc all the way or always inserted into the tray let's go to scan disk while defrag is doing its thing scan disk cannot check this drive now because the disk is not properly formatted or programmed such as a disk utility has locked it so you can see defrag doing its thing here let's just go ahead and stop it since it doesn't really matter in this virtual machine anyway and now let's finally go into up well, I just opened the calculator that's what that looks like let us go into scan disk and see what that looks like we'll do let's start it up pretty standard I remember the spinning disk icon let's go ahead and cancel that I think we're almost done taking a look at stuff here so I already showed you the calculator imaging not sure what that is must be some basic video or excuse me photo editor notepad pretty much unchanged from what we have today in Windows 10 MS paint very basic but pretty entertaining back in the day if you didn't have internet access or any extra games installed and finally we have wordpad a very basic word processor already shown you IE let's go into the MS DOS prompt I'm not really sure what to try out except for basic ping commands and let's go take a look around at some folders that we have oops did not want to go to that let's just go to my computer so of course we have our floppy drive the C drive your disk drive and some of your other shortcut folders and here we have some of the other files for Windows yes I do have an old game installed which happens to be the game of life the original version for Windows and I think that's about it with this little Windows 98 tour tune in for the next video I think I'll be taking a look at Mac OS 10.3 also known as I actually forgot what it was called so I'm going to look it up real quick Mac 10.3 I think it was Panther yep it was Panther so I will be taking a look at that next so stay tuned for that let's go ahead and shut down and that concludes this video if you have any comments questions or feedback about this or anything else feel free to leave those down below in the comments area that's it with the video so thanks a lot for watching and i'll talk to you all very soon